All right. Let's talk about building a custom e-bike. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any footage of me putting together this bike. But trust me, you really don't need to see it. It's pretty basic. What you need to know is that there's three major components. There's the motor, usually a hub motor. There's the controller and the battery. And the actual installation process is super simple. You pop in the hub motor, you find a spot for both the controller and the battery, and then it's all about cable management. If you're afraid about the wiring involved, my advice on that is don't be. It's basic and they only plug into one corresponding wire. So it's kind of hard to mess up. Let's go on the right side of the road here. The much more challenging part of building your own bike is actually planning it out and ordering the right parts. And this is the topic I want to discuss in this video. But before I do so, uh, guys, if you enjoy the content, let me know. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, helps me out a lot. I'm trying to get monetized so I can go on more epic adventures and make awesome videos for this channel. Okay, but getting back on topic, when it comes to building your own custom bike, the very first decision that most people have to make is whether to go hub or mid-drive. And I made a whole dedicated video on this topic. I'll leave it linked at the top right of the screen. But the TLDR of that video is that hub motors are extremely plentiful, so you can find the right match for you when it comes to power and price. But mid drive motors definitely have their own sets of advantages. And one of the big ones that I actually did not even realize until recently was that mid drive motors don't have an external controller. So, as I showed you guys in the beginning of this video, my controller is rather big and it's mounted on my bike. But if I went with a mid-drive system, that part would be completely eliminated and really help with the cable management, which is another thing I'm going to talk about in a second. So once you do that, the next step I would recommend is picking a bike frame. And don't overlook this step. I know the motor and the battery can be very exciting, but there's a few key things I would look out for. So obviously, if you want fat tire, go with a bike that supports a fat tire. Same thing when it comes to the suspension of the bike, you have to decide what you want. But then there's other stuff that at least I never thought about when I was new to this. One small technical specification that I had no clue about and I completely lucked out on was the width of the dropouts, and this is applicable to those that want a hub motor. I kind of thought that as long as the wheel size matched your bike, you can go with any hub motor you want. But you have to make sure that the hub motor that replaces your back wheel fits your bike, because apparently the width of the dropouts varies from bike to bike. Now to my knowledge, the most common dropout width is 135 millimeters. That's what I have here and most hub motors have those specifications. Usually when it comes to the high-powered e-bikes, they have more like 155 millimeter dropouts. And the last major piece of advice when it comes to picking the proper bike frame is to have a compartment for the battery, the controller, and all the cable management, because as evident on my bike build, I clearly did not think of this in advance. So for this reason, you want to get a bike frame that has some kind of compartment in the middle designed to put a battery. Or as mentioned previously, you can try a mid-drive motor because the cable management is a bit better with those systems. And yeah, that's kind of the main thing when it comes to building your own custom e-bike. I'll give you guys a few more random pieces of advice. So in terms of power for an e-bike, Pay attention to the amperage of the controller. The voltage of the battery tends to get all the attention here, and that's important. Think of voltage as affecting more of the top speed of the bike, and the amperage affecting things like the peppiness and acceleration of the bike. So definitely don't overlook that. And just for reference, my bike has a 45 amp controller and a 72 volt battery, and it does have pretty good acceleration and a top speed of around 41 miles an hour. But a big reason for that is the weight of my system. And that's another very important metric. I just did a range test of my custom bike versus an Onyx video at the top right of the screen. Go check it out. And the Onyx is also 72 volts, but the battery is actually bigger than my bike. But because the Onyx weighs significantly more, I get a lot better range. So when building a custom bike, weight is definitely something you guys should keep in mind. And I guess my final piece of advice is to just do it, guys. Don't dwell and get caught up on every little detail. And I would strongly encourage you guys to go ahead and pull the trigger if this is something you've been planning on doing for a long time. It's a lot of fun and it's completely worth it, at least to me so far. And I have 2,050 miles on my bike 
and I made it about five months ago so I've definitely been enjoying my time with the bike now with that said I'm actually in talks to potentially buying a used Suron X a 2021 model for only around a thousand bucks I'm still in talks with the sellers so no promises yet but keep an eye on the channel for my next video because I might just be showing you guys how to buy a used e-bike so I'll leave you guys with that video hope you guys enjoyed if you did and you're still watching you guys know what to do leave a like subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.